Israel and U.S. are at odds over conflicting visions for post-war Gaza. The United States has offered strong support to Israel in its war against the Hamas militant group that rules the Gaza Strip. But the Allies are increasingly at odds over what will happen to Gaza once the war winds down. Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, this week announced that Israel would retain an open-ended security presence in Gaza. Israeli officials talk of imposing a buffer zone to keep Palestinians away from the Israeli border. They rule out any role for the Palestinian Authority, which was ousted from Gaza by Hamas in 2007 but governs semi-autonomous areas of the occupied West Bank. The United States has laid out a much different vision. Top officials have said they will not allow Israel to reoccupy Gaza or further shrink its already small territory. They have repeatedly called for a return of the internationally recognized Palestinian Authority and the resumption of peace talks aimed at establishing a Palestinian state alongside Israel. These conflicting visions have set the stage for difficult discussions between Israel and the U.S. The U.S., which along with other Western countries considers Hamas a terrorist group, has embraced this goal. But as the war drags on, it has expressed misgivings about the dire humanitarian conditions and mounting civilian death toll in Gaza, where health authorities report over 16,000 dead, at least two-thirds of them women and children. Israel says Hamas is to blame by using civilians as human shields. Over the weekend, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said it is critical that Israel protect Gaza civilians. On Thursday, Secretary of State Antony Blinken went even farther, telling Israel that civilian casualties remain too high and that Israel must step up its efforts to reduce them, his office said. Blinken also called on Israel to increase the flow of humanitarian aid into Gaza. The biggest differences between the allies have emerged over the longer-term vision for Gaza. Netanyahu has offered only glimpses of what he plans. On Tuesday, he said the military would retain open-ended security control over the Gaza Strip long after the war ends, suggesting a form of extended Israeli occupation. Netanyahu ruled out the idea of foreign peacekeepers, saying only the Israeli army could ensure that Gaza remains demilitarized. Netanyahu has also rejected a return of the Palestinian Authority, saying its leader, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas cannot be trusted. Israel told Western allies and regional neighbors about the buffer zone plans as recently as last week, without offering a detailed proposal, according to Egyptians officials and Arab and Western diplomats, who insisted on anonymity to discuss the topic. The officials said countries informed of the proposal include Egypt, Qatar, Jordan, Turkey, the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. Two Egyptian officials said it appears that Israel doesn't have a detailed workable plan for such a zone, including its width. They just say, it would be a temporary buffer zone, one of the officials said. While no decisions have been taken, these ideas appear to put Israel at odds with the White House. Biden and other top officials have repeatedly said that a revitalized Palestinian authority must play a role in post-war Gaza and that Israel must seek a two-state solution involving the PA. They have ruled out a long-term reoccupation or redrawing of Gaza's borders. Frustration with Netanyahu may not be limited to the US. Amos Harrell, the military affairs columnist for the Haaretz Daily, said Israeli army commanders believe Netanyahu is motivated by domestic political considerations and refusing to deal with the Palestinian Authority, due to coalition constructions from his far-right partners. Netanyahu and his hardline coalition partners oppose Palestinian independence. For now, both sides seem to be focused on the shared goal of destroying Hamas. It's important for them that Israel achieve the military goals because this is the starting point for any changes that can happen the day after, said Eldad Shavit, a former high-ranking Israeli intelligence official. The US has indicated that it will show some patience after the fighting subsides. But as the death toll in Gaza continues to rise, conditions deteriorate, and Biden enters an election year with significant portions of his democratic base pushing for an end to Israel's offensive these differences are likely to grow in the absence of a clear endgame. Shavit said that tensions could rise if the US at some point concludes that Israel is dragging its feet or ignoring American demands. But for now, the Americans want Israel to succeed, he said.